The first technique that many people find really useful is called the Pomodoro technique. And what this means is that you're blocking out 25 minutes of uninterrupted focus. While that does seem easy, it's actually way harder than you think. Be reasonable with yourself and try starting with just one block a day of 25 minutes of uninterrupted focus. This means heads down, pick a task that can be accomplished in 25 minutes and solely work on that task, letting nothing else creep in from the outside. If you're able to do that, slowly expand to more and more Pomodoro sessions of 25 blocks. The next technique is called time boxing. And basically we all know this too well, that it's way too easy to fall into a 60, 80 hour work week because there's always just so much to get done. But time boxing sets limits. It says, I'm only gonna work 35 or 40 hours a week and I'm gonna get my task done in that time. By working within that time frame, you're gonna be more effective because you're driven to do so. And also you're not gonna overextend yourself by working an eight hour week where you just wind up getting too tired and do subpar work. Another important technique is to follow your body's ultradian rhythm. The ultradian rhythm is made up of 90 to 120 minute cycles where you're going to be at peak productivity followed by 20 minute lulls. What you wanna do is focus on your most difficult tasks during your most productive cycles and then the less difficult, less mentally intensive tasks during those 20 minute lulls. So the next question is, how do we find our ultradian rhythm? So what you wanna do is log and score on a scale of one to 10, your focus, energy, and motivation for every waking hour, every day, for three weeks. After three weeks, you can review your logs and you'll start to notice trends in your scores, which will enable you to zone in on your most productive hours and your most productive days. These are probably the days that you should be focusing on your hardest tasks. It's also good to keep a journal of when you're feeling most energetic and productive and making notes of any circumstances that might have impacted that day. For instance, maybe you had a cold or maybe you felt lethargic after you ate something for lunch or maybe you felt a perk after an afternoon coffee break. All these things can help you dial in once again on your most productive hours and times to be working. In the end, take all of these findings to figure out when you're most productive. This might not be a nine to five schedule. Maybe you find out that you're actually a creative night owl. Uh, the important thing is that you're working when you're going to work best and you're not wasting your time so that the rest of your time you can spend working on other things in your life. When trying to manage your time effectively, it's always really important to know that you shouldn't be too hard on yourself. You have to be forgiving. Not all hours are the same. You might have an amazing productive hour one moment and the next one might be a dud. But by being hard on yourself and feeling guilty about that dud hour, that just means that you're gonna carry over the lack of productivity into the next hour. Understand that you have productive moments and less productive moments and harness the productive moments to get as much done as possible. One important tip from productivity pro Jess Martin is to create margins. And this means don't create such a rigid schedule that you can't let productive moments flow into the next. By having too rigid of a schedule, you're gonna instantly create burnout because you're not gonna allow for breaks or you're not gonna allow for creative thought to continue until its natural end. I'm sure you've heard it time and again, but honestly, creating a work-life balance is key. Working 80 plus hours a week is going to burn you out. You need to step away from the work and let your brain recharge. Uh, doing a creative activity, uh, going for a walk, exercising, these are ways that you can come back to your work and your tasks, replenish and recharged, and be able to approach them with a new angle. Another good way to prioritize your tasks is to set up calendar reminders that help break up big tasks into smaller tasks. The calendar reminders will keep you on focus and help you manage your time better. So I know that's a lot of tips and techniques for managing time. Um, ultimately, you have to come up with a system that works best for you. You know, try things, see what works, what doesn't. For me, I love a mix of the Pomodoro, um, heads down 25 minute blocks to get tasks done. Um, and I also really love time boxing, making sure that I limit my work to a certain area of my life, but still, you know, have time to recharge my brain and come back to my tasks with a fresh perspective, a fresh energy, and a fresh mindset. So now let's dive into some of the tools that are actually gonna help you prioritize your tasks and manage your time and get things done.